Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Hi, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing better and better every day. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but I'm, I'm you know, reversing a lot of it. How, how, do, how have you done that with the Qigong? You know, the, the, all the principles and training of all the spiritual stuff that I've done, you know, up until now, including the 20 something years of the Course in Miracles. Right. In, um, have been building blocks that have opened up, you know, just this divine crumb trail. And it starts off, I'm recording this, by the way. So um, okay. you'll have a copy if you want it. Oh, but thank you. It, my training started off a long time ago um, through the Optimal Health Institute. And then I studied intuitive, head, um, intuitive healing and intuitive medicine with Francesca McCarthy in Sausalito. Uh -huh. And she was the first accredited um, healing by the medical industry. And then, you know, the course and then um, all of the other foundations of all the other spiritual stuff brought in this um, filmmaker who contacted me when I was really bad. I mean, my, I was dragging my right foot, was flopping, and I have ALS on top of frontal uh -huh. and in tremors and flashulations and screeching and ringing in my head and the cerebellum. I was falling over and dropping like um, on an elevator and all the noise would go out and just 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 incredible amounts of pain and my hands wouldn't work like I was dying 20 t different times and I still have had gone to the gates of death even in this last cut last year my whole liver blew up and so I work really hard at it but every time I get okay and I'm ready to let go then holy spirit brings in another amazing teacher from china out of nowhere and i've just been blessed with all these teachers from you know ancient wisdom the the guy i'm working with right now his family wrote the yellow emperor and the i chang and i'm doing a lot of meditations three hours of meditation a day with him and i've been studying jinen qigong which is what the um tcm tra traditional chinese medicine um, all of Qigong and all of TCM originated from the Yellow Emperor. And then um, there was a medicine-less hospital in China called Jinan Qigong. And this is what the name looks like. And it's science. He was a Western medical doctor and an Eastern medical doctor by the time he was 18, Dr. Peng. And he, could, he mastered 19 different sects, which is Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, wow. all these different, uh, like the Ifu Chang, I mean, all of these different lineages, this man that is alive right now mastered all of those and became a Western medical doctor and an Eastern medical doctor by the time he was 18. Like he's, a, he's almost a, a, like a, an awakened being to be able to even, he's got like a photographic memory. He'll read the I Chang or the Yellow Emperor and he memorizes it. Like it's just wow. beyond, brilliant. yeah. So he combined all 19 of these sects in with this practical movements to open up your body and to clear out disease. So it's kind of like the Course in Miracles, except for that if the Course says, you know, I'm a soul, not a body, I'm free, which is what the I Chang and the Yellow Emperor says too. But it says that, you know, the universe is inside and the micro is the macro, where I feel like a lot of us in the Course of Miracles disassociate it from our body and right. be from it. And that's probably how these diseases even came in for a lot of us. Like in the Course in Miracles with the Center for Inner Peace, all of us imploded around the same time. Wow. Yeah. The, the vice president, I'm the vice president of the Center for Inner Peace. I was. And the, and the president had his ferritin, ferritin had, was, he was making too much ferritin and he died. And I was not making enough ferritin and I had all these iron um, in, injections, which they overdosed me on. And then I ended up with brain disease. And then Rudy's brain blew up. He had four craniotomies and Sharon's heart blew up. Like we all imploded. And I think part of that negating the body, body. rather than heaven on earth inside. And so realizing that the micro inside each cell or inside each organ is heaven on earth where, where it's real purity and love and, and, and combining the universe, the earth, the sentient beings and the human beings deep inside your universe. So you don't, it's how it's, it makes more sense that the micros, the macro. So we have to bring love 
to that, which is all of the cells connected to all the stars, to everything. So that I can say that to you. I don't know that I'd say that to your brother if he wasn't studying the course forever. But I think you understand where yeah. we're going with this, that everything's now Yeah, working. I've been working. doing the course since the 80s, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's why I knew I could say this to you. Yeah. And I, and I, I still might even say it to someone that's new because this is what's called for when you've got a severe disease like frontal temporal dementia. You don't just practice qigong. You need right. to quiet. You need to clean up your mind. You need to clean up the way you emotionally react. You need to practice. You need to practice all day. You know, there's like there's a lot of things. You can get on some supplements. You've got to get on homeopathy. You've got to call in your divine crumb trail. And it's different for some people. Like some people have to get the mercury out of their teeth. And some people just have to stop using aluminum when they cook. Like there's, there's, you've got to hit it from every angle. You're not going to yeah. do anything or even heal it. But I didn't want to. I just want to, I just want to wake up. Like the healing is a side effect. Because yeah. it's like the next step, Shin and Qigong is the next step for me because I had done all the editions of Course in Miracles. I had looked up the etymology of all the words. I had taught it for 18 years. I had been right. reading it, but I didn't just teach it. I lived it. Every single missed thought. And I, I said to the Holy Spirit, I was like, I want to do everything I can in this lifetime to never come back here again because this place is hell. And I want, I want to get as much done. I want to do my part and give me all of it. And that's when I got the disease. So I was like, okay, this must be my perfect path or I wouldn't be on it. So that's how I've handled it. You know, you can't be a victim to your disease. You have to take responsibility that you've called this in. Now, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to work with Holy Spirit or am I going to work with the ego? And that's each moment as you catch yourself on fire and you can't, function or remember to wipe your ass. I mean, it's like, it's a really tough assignment, but I could see me going, I'm a badass. I want more. I want more. I want more. So that's how I handled it. And mm -hmm. at one point when I had severe ALS, I was screaming at people. Now here's the little light worker of the community, you know, yeah. screaming at people at the top of my lungs with frontal lobe, wanting to kill and hating everyone. I looked at him and I said, you motherfucker. And I'm talking to God and I go, I've been your ambassador in this lifetime. I've done everything I can to teach and talk for you. Get on it. I can't do this anymore. You need to help me like the sun helps the ugly weed right now. You need to grow me from it. You got to make this easier. I can't. Yeah. And then things started getting easier. So, you know, it's these decisions, you know, I want to do my assignment, but I, I, I can't do it that hard on my own. Like I need help continuously. So the point of all of it is is where is your brother at and what's he want to do with it and who's going to work for you know yeah really those are questions that i would ask him and and invite it may be most loving to just let him have frontal temporal dementia most people with frontal temporal dementia have so much apathy and so much disconnect from their heart you may not be able to reach him and it may be most loving like when my mom was dying um excuse me for one second this is Kelly. Okay. Hold on one second, Raina. This is Kelly. Okay. Um, but when my mom was dying and she had cancer in her brain and she goes, there's bugs everywhere. There's a man in the tree. And I was like, mom, there's no bugs. And my brother, who was a heroin addict, who was used to seeing bugs, he walked over and he grabbed her blanket and he shook it out and he put it back on her and she was okay. So yeah. the point of that is, is that it may be more loving to just meet your brother where he's at than yeah. to convince him that reality is different. You okay. So I don't know where your brother's at. I haven't met with him. But for you, if you can um, go on YouTube and look up a woman called Tipa Snow, T-E-E-P-A, Tipa no, she's an educator with dementia and she can teach you. like if he's getting violent which is frontal temporal dementia like we've lost our peripheral vision and we can't see on the carpet if something's a hole or something to step over and we can't tell so when you come in say you're trying to feed him when you come in he doesn't know you're coming in with a spoon if you come in straight forward and you put his hand on the spoon he will automatically open his mouth. She teaches you skill. Yeah, okay. Deal with them so that you can stay safe. 
and so that they can stay safe. Like when you, if, if he can't go to the bathroom and you have to help him wipe, if you put tissue in his hand, the brain body connection can overthink what doesn't connect anymore in the brain. And just learning how to navigate that helped me to restore myself, let alone understand I can't see. So I, that's why I'm more jumpy. That's why I'm more scared. So it's this acute anxiety because you're losing your mind and you're losing your vision and you're losing your hearing and you're losing your decoding. You can't understand what people are saying. You forget to look at a light when you're crossing the street. Like all of a sudden, losing your mind is really not as fun as getting fucked up was when we were younger. That we enjoyed, but yeah. this is terror. And so, you know, anything to calm him down. If I was anybody, I would recommend get him on CBD oil, calm his nervous system down. That will really help, even THC. If you okay. drug him, those are the best drugs. Get him calmed down. You know, and then if he okay. wants to heal, we can work on it. Like, you know, we can send him to, I have scanners in, in Malaysia that can just look at his body and say, okay, here's your tazone. You need to rub your heart. They've got to get your heart center open, or it's your liver. We've got to get your liver chi to come down. Like, there's real methods in healing, depending on where he's ready and he can do some energy work if that's what he wants to do. But otherwise it might be, most people don't want to do it. Most people want to eat, most diabetics will still eat sugar. Most yeah. fat people will still binge even though they know how not to. So the question that's most loving is do you want to heal? Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Because it takes everything. everything. You can't half ass this. You yeah. know, it's killing us at a faster rate than most people are dying and everyone's body is decomposing. Yeah. So you have to find out what is most loving for him. Okay. Um, I really get what you're saying about don't go into, I worked with the SMI those with serious mental illness oh, uh, for a long time. And I worked with people with dementia uh -huh. and about not going into the, don't, don't bother debating the right. reality. Yeah. yeah. And so I, 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 I know what you're saying about that. Um, How old is he? Uh, 61. 61. It usually strikes younger. FTD usually strikes about their 40s. Well, you know, since I've read the BV part of it. The behavior. Um, yeah. That applies to him. He's had inappropriate behavior for a very long time. Well, that could be Alzheimer's too, but if he's aggressive or if he's dead, like if he doesn't love anymore... If he doesn't enjoy any of the stuff he enjoyed before, yeah, that that's more apathy. the problem. I had apathy for two years. Like I went from being the most loving, caring person to like, I don't care. Leave me alone. Yeah, I didn't care about my grandbaby. I didn't care about my fiance. I didn't care about my daughter. I just did not care, and I couldn't cry. I couldn't even laugh. I'm dead. So how long has it been since you were first, the first onset? Well, I was diagnosed in 2012, and it takes, you know, roughly two years to get your full diagnosis. Right. Yeah. If, if you've got a good doctor, like they gave me a PET scan within the first year, but they saw, I had already had a vascular malformation in my brain before, and I had a cerebral angioplasty, so they could see that the global value of my brain had shrunk re within a short period of time quite a bit. And then they did a, you know, two M three MRIs, one with con two with contrast, then they did um, five lumbar punctures, and then they did, um, they sent me to UCSF to be studied, and they did a wow. PET scan, two, well, I've had three now, but um, a PET scan, and that's when they see, they can see that it's in both frontal lobes and both temporal. I also have it in the cerebellum, but they don't normally spend the money on people that are maybe even your, your, your brother's age and up, because they, at that point, like when I was in my 40s, and I was in the peak of my, you know, I should have been sharp, I was sharp, yeah. you know, and I couldn't 
remember how to wipe my own self. Like, you know, I couldn't swallow. I was choking. Like I had all yeah. of other symptoms. Um, they might not recommend the PET scan because they're so expensive. They, at that time, I know they were the, they were over $200,000. But the and MRIs. No, the MRIs are not that expensive. They're expensive, but they're nothing compared to the PET scans. Okay. The pets are, um, you know, and I don't know anymore because I don't go to the doctors anymore. I don't believe in them either, but because they just give mm -hmm. you bad news and I'm here to proving that I'm going to reverse this, at least for today. They give you what? They give you bad news. They've told oh. me you're going to die and everyone believes them, but I'm working with thousands of people around the world that we're breaking all this Western medical promises. I'm off all the pharma. It's the farm wow. that's killing us. I can send you five, e five messages that I just recently received from the World Organization on the Medical Board and from like five different universities that the Western medicine is now the number five disease killer. It's the Western medicine. It's the antibiotics and the medication and the Western medical model that's killing people. Number five. Wow. That it's killed more people, 1,500, 157 one five seven eight or one five eight seven a thousand whatever that number is my brain doesn't do numbers but anyway 158 thousand people more people are killed from um murder arson and something else and and the western medical model has killed more people they've been doing these autopsies and studying and it's the antibiotics uh, like if, if a cancer patient's put on antibiotics if they're put on one they have a 12 or 17 percent um, infection rate. If they put them on two antibiotics, they have a fifty-eight percent infection rate. Like the more antibiotics, the more yeah, do. the more antibiotics, the more infections. And so, I'll send you a copy of those um, if you send me an email. Yeah. These these are just released. The Western medical model is ninety percent of the problem. Oh, okay. So you tell what? they're going to die. You believe it. They, they told me I was going to do all this stuff, and I started doing all that stuff. So how, when, how long did it take between when you were diagnosed and you were really bad, like you couldn't swallow? and It was all coming on hard and fast right from the yes. beginning. Yeah, and it's been a bloody hell. Like I'm only, I'm just coming out of like six years of level 20 broken razor blade burning glass pain frontal temporal dementia yeah 97 percent of the cases are somatic pain like neuropathy but burning broken glass like the most intense pain you can possibly imagine two percent are um they have the opposite where they can chew glass and not feel pain at all so there's something really a, a huge but but frontal temporal dementia there's a booklet called um the ftd booklet and it, on page 19 i'll show you it's got um, a couple of different, it's got 19 different ways that it plays out. Let me just grab that for you and I'll show you. Give me one sec. Um, FTD booklet. And you can get a copy of this from the frontal temporal dementia. Um, let's see, where is it? I think this is it. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen with you. Okay, so here on page 19, no, page 20, no, 18? Hang on. Okay, here we go, it's on page six. So can you see this? Yeah. So in the beginning, this is where your, your, your brother probably fits in. It's the behavioral variant, which means he has apathy, reduced initiative, any yeah. in impulsive behaviors, emotional flatness, excessive emotions, and memory generally intact. So yeah. with frontal temporal dementia, the memory is the last part to go. That's the problem. We know what we're doing or we don't. There's two people with FTD, the ones that know they have it and the ones that don't. Okay. But we, our memory is intact most of the time, but we lose our ability to um, sequence, to um, multitask, to the executive functions going. So you don't know what order to do things. Like you don't remember how to get dressed. You can't remember 
how to how how things work. Like I was a hairdresser, I couldn't get get do my hair behind my head. I couldn't do. I was a Pilates instructor as well, a level five Pilates mm -hmm. instructor, and I lost my precipitation. I still don't have it. I couldn't write. I couldn't type. I couldn't read. I was an avid reader. I never watched TV. I just read all of the you know editions of the course and looked up the etymology of the word. Like I was brilliant, and I couldn't words i couldn't even understand what words meant so i was going into this next level which is called the progressive language decline and that's when your words don't come out you can't get talk well and you you can't understand words like i didn't know what a hill was i couldn't understand most money or anything mm -hmm. and then i went into this progressive motor decline so that's when i started having this muscle rigidity i couldn't do buttons i couldn't operate these appliances i was i had spaddle problems i still have a lot of this stuff i'm not complete i'm not out of the woods at all yeah. and then i ended up with um the slow movement the falling the body stiffness my eyes have been blink they were blinking just constantly blinking they wouldn't stop blinking and then um of course i had the, ch the changes of behavior then my legs became like sandbags i couldn't lift them and then i was waking up screaming in tremors and charlie horses in the middle of the night and i i, I lost use of the whole right side the left side was in muscle flagellation and tremors and choking and fluid coming out, choking on my food, exasperating, so on and so forth. So I ended up with FTD, BB, FTD, and ALS. This one down here at the bottom where I had the yeah. weakness and shrinkage and jerking. So those are the, var the variants. They have the extra letters that you get as you go along. It's going to go one way or the other because you start off with it in both frontal lobes and both temporal. It just goes fast. So I was given two year, nine months to two years with mine. Wow. I'm on year, I think, six now. And um, where do you get that booklet? Um, okay, so this booklet here, let me go back here and, and show you. Um, can you still see the screen share or shall I share it again? I think I need to share I it. I don't again. still okay, see it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So if you contact this, um, where, what's it called? Fronto Tempo. No, no, here we go. It's um here's this number, one eight hundred. Okay. Or you can you can even visit this www dot. Okay. N I H. Y yeah, but um I think I got it off the website from the the AFTD, it's the Association for Frontal Temporal Dementia. Uh huh. And we can plug him into a support group on on Facebook that he can talk to people about his symptoms and find out that he's not really crazy, you know. And a lot of other people have that. That helped me a lot in the beginning, and it made it fun. Like, I people would understand what I was going through when no one else would. And when you lock, when you put your underwear in the freezer, or the keys end up in the toilet, you know what I mean? Just just stuff that's funny when it's with other people but it's a horror show when it's by yourself we would you know it helped me to have that camaraderie now i can't go there because most of those people you know when somebody's happy and you're not yeah you know i mean and when someone's empowered and you're not like i'm they, yeah. they're like don't give false hope and i'm like okay so i don't i only go where where people believe what i'm believing and where we're healing i can't i don't try to change the what you know they want to be victims reina they want to make you know there's so much angst with no. because we do really inappropriate stuff and most people want to blame everyone else rather than what i did the my medicine was that scared me i'm sorry i don't like what i just said i'm so sorry that i've caused you harm but that's decades of training okay you know, on cleaning with the ego and having right. the holy spirit help me think like I literally cleared out the veil and I was like, show me, tell me where to go, what to do, who to talk to and when. And all of a sudden I'd hear, right. water's running in the bathtub, go turn it off. Or you left the fire, there's a fire. You know, I was getting Holy Spirit messages to navigate me because I was getting thunk when I couldn't think anymore. And that no. was my way out was working with Holy Spirit. Right. What's the Facebook so you can't join it unless you actually have a diagnosis. So no, I mean, can he join? You know, he would have to reach out to the um. Oh, okay. And he'd have to say that he has FTD. 
No, okay. In order to get um, in, you've got, they do like a little interview and you have to say, he can just say, I have um, a brain disease and I suspect that it's FTD and they might let him in. But yeah. because they do protect these secret groups, you know, they're not open. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're they, going they, to the primary care next week to get him into, he just came to live with me uh, uh, a week yeah. and a half ago. Yeah. And um, he's been in Hawaii. Beautiful. For 40 years. So, in Hawaii? Uh, Maui. Okay. My daughter lives on um, the North Shore of Oahu. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And her um, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, lives in Hawaii. They go back and forth a lot. So he's never gotten an, an actual diagnosis. Right. So I'm going to get him into primary care so she can refer him. Well, it'll really help for you to say, I suspect I have another friend that has FTD. I've read the FTD yeah. booklet. He has these symptoms. I suspect FTD. Yeah. But, and then ask them, say, I would really like to speed this up and get a PET scan. Right. You know, okay. because they will take you through bloody hell, test after test, the stupid test over and over again, so many different things. And they still may do that. I mean, sometimes when you know too much, they don't like it. And when you don't know enough, like they fuck with you. They're just making so much money on all these tests yeah. and more prescriptions. Like they put me on um, Aricep, Namenda, Esalon patch, all this stuff for Alzheimer's, knowing that it's contradictive. And so one pill, I was out of my mind. I couldn't think, I couldn't talk. I was in these Alzheimer's states from one pill. They did each of these pills for me. And I was wise enough to go, I'm not doing it. But most people do what the doctors say. So I'm an obstinate patient. I was like, I'm not taking that. I was in bed for a month on one pill. And, you know, I'm sensitive too. And I'm just guided by Holy Spirit. I was like, this is not. But most people get so buried in pharma. They give them all this pharma. And it's the pharma that fucks us up more than anything. Like I would get them on everything natural. Get them off sugar. Get them off flour. Get them off any canned drinks, any um, aluminum stuff, um, and and get them on a if if he's interested in healing, a plant based organic diet, gluten free. I mean, you got to get the inflammation down. And and MCT oil and coconut oil, seven tablespoons a day, but not the MCT because he could get diarrhea. But I've mm. seen um, there's a what there's a, a TED talks by a woman, a doctor Karen Northo, who started studying you heard of her yeah 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 so seven tablespoons of coconut a day oil a day for her husband returned to his abilities and now it's called ac1202 in medical trials uh -huh. and that is how i got my words back i couldn't think or talk i couldn't talk and um i started doing the high fat high protein diet at that time just to get the cognitive ability back but then that fucked with the als because it's really acidic and it made that bad. So I, I whole food plant um, based high fat high protein diet is, but much more carbs now. I was under less than twenty grams of carbs for the first five years just to restore the, the thinking because I couldn't mm -hmm. I couldn't function. But I've worked hard. You know, it's hard work. It's a discipline. So did you always live by yourself? Well, I've been a single mom since my daughter was 18 months old, but I had like 19 different beautiful, amazing relationships. I don't know that, I mean, I've always been like the man of the house, but I've, I've had some cohabitants that have moved in and out, but I've never had anything last more than two years. So I've been the sole proprietor of my life. Yeah. But I mean, like you said, you live alone now. I do live alone and I've been living alone, you know, since my daughter was 17. Oh. I think boyfriends come and live. I don't know if you remember, I was dating Daniel from London and he came yeah. for a little while. He was here for a few months. I was dating Andrew. We, we went back and forth on weekends, but we never lived together. So I've had a couple of quick sporadic little live-ins, but I've been mostly yeah. on my own. And you find that's okay for you? In well, the I had to have help from the IHHS. You know? I had to have help from the IHHS office. I couldn't you know, I needed help getting to the bathroom and showering and cutting my food and cooking and everything. Like I, I do all everything on my own. Now I just have help um, once a week or once every two weeks with laundry and stuff like that, that I still can't do, but I'm cooking mostly with the toaster oven. Yeah. yeah. But I'm doing all of that stuff on my own again. I, I have my food delivered in. I don't go, I have like the box, the organic box delivered and 
and I prepare all of that stuff. So I'm back to that place now, but I had to have IHHS office full time in the beginning. And it was awful because these people are awful. You know, they messed up my house more than they cleaned it. They mm -hmm. stole from me. They're, they're awful people. You know, that was a whole forgiveness opportunity in and of itself right there. I mean, right. having those people in my home was just horrendous, horrendous. Yeah. You gotta be really careful when you have people come into your house. They're okay. foolish, and then they'll blame the person, the, the you know, yeah. lock all your personal papers up. You've got to lock up all your jewels. If you're going to have in-home health care, and you're going to need it because I needed a walker. I needed help walk, you know, all that stuff. I needed a, a items to sit in the shower with because I couldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're going to need help, but you've got to take care of your stuff. Yeah. And know that they're going to fuck with him. Right. You know? I'm, I'm very, I feel very protective. Yeah, but you're yeah. the one that's going to get your ass kicked too because he's going to snap on you. That's even my dad did that, you know? Yeah. Um, like if I was helping my dad, he would snap, but it wasn't at me. He was just, he was a man. And uh, it wasn't personal. Was you know, and he needed help, but he didn't want to need help. And, you know, when you can't process, you lash out at the people you love the most. My mother had dementia at 60. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she got, I mean, she would have been mortified at how her behavior became. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know? I was, you know, but, but my key and my answer was, because I was raised with such severe alcoholism in my family, yeah. But I wasn't going to pretend like it was under the carpet and that didn't happen. So when I blurted out awful things, and I mean awful things, I would say, I'm so sorry. I didn't like the way that happened. Please forgive me. You know? Yeah. So I think the responsibility of the patient is the cure. I yeah. really do. If the patient says, hey, I don't like what I just did. But when the patient acts like it didn't happen, and then the family acts like it didn't happen, like in the alcoholic model, right. okay, she did that, I did that, and everyone goes away, and it makes a bigger and bigger wedge from love. And there's a big disconnect. And so coming back and going, if he says something to you, if he says something to you, you can say, you know, my heart hurts. I, I want, I'm, I, this is a call for love for me and for you. I love you, and I need to love myself. And I want Holy Spirit to restore my thinking to innocence and peace, to restore your thinking to innocence and peace. How can I help you? Yeah, you know? okay. Without losing yourself. Because yeah, I have very strong boundaries oh, thank from God. my own work. Good, good. You know, I got, I get want... Yeah, I forget that, you know, I, gotta, I can't help them if I'm not, it, it, like, what did Marianne Williams say? The best advice yeah. ever. It's when two people, when you empower each other, that's helpful. Not yes. when he disempowers you or you disempower him. Yeah. You come in and you help him to help himself. Like, yeah. come on, let's cut this food together. Let's do this together. Yeah. You know, if he ends up counting ants because people with FTD go crazy, we do things like count ants. We do crazy shit. Yeah. Get him an ant farm. You know what I mean? Like, right. you can be enjoy whatever it is that he's losing it with because that's meeting him where he's at too yeah you know i mean it's hard it's hard but to just my daughter's done such a great job instead of saying don't you remember when i told you this please don't ever say that to him no please don't like just say over and over again the most loving thing if he's if his incessant thing is what time is it 1101 what time is it you don't say, I just told you. You just say, it's 1101 and have a different tone. Okay. Have you seen that YouTube called Sparrow? Have you seen that YouTube called Sparrow? Sparrow? Sparrow. No. It's the most beautiful example of what it is that you want to embody when you're going through this. And you should have him watch it with you because... It's about a father and a son, and the, the son is a businessman, and the father keeps saying, what is that? And the son keeps reading his newspaper and saying, it's a sparrow, and he's getting really pissed. And then in the end, 
The father goes in the house after the son snapped at him for like the 30th time and he brings him a book and he hands it to him and he says, today my son asked me what a bird was 200 times and every time I said sparrow. I have the chills as I describe the story. Yeah. So watch that with your brother and meet okay. this. So this is where we're gonna come from. We're gonna come from nothing's too much for me to repeat to you. If you need yeah. to ask me a million times, ask. I want to do this with love and just keep saying right. yeah. And the most loving thing that I think I could recommend to anyone that's taking care of someone with dementia or Alzheimer's is instead of saying, you didn't put the post toaster down, you put the bread in the toaster, but you didn't push it down, just push it down. Right. Like You don't need to tell him the things he's not doing because he already knows enough. Yeah. You know, and it's so hard to be, especially to be so high functioning like I was, and then to be zero functioning, it, yeah. it, that is crushing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty, I work with the homeless every day. I run a homeless drop-in center and a shelter. And, and so, I like if they if they come in drunk. Yeah, I don't say you know you shouldn't. I just I take them for just how they are. Wow, you're better than me because I call people on that shit. Because I my dad owned bars, restaurants, and delis when I grew up, and we were yeah. around it. And then I got sober in my twenties, and I've been in AA for like thirty years. Yeah, that so was a stepping stone before the course for me. And so when people are loaded, like I had an ex fiance just come over here. I don't have too many people come in, but he just got out of prison and he fell into the chair and I looked at him and I said, you just fell in the chair. And he goes, yeah, I just, I need to relax. And I go, you look pretty fucking relaxed to me. I said, you come in my home like this, you're going to relax your ass right out yeah. the door. And I said, you don't come here like that. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm much more uh, like that with yeah. my personal space. That's what I said to him. Yes, I said, I am oh, yeah, you. You know, yeah. how dare you come into my home like that? I don't let anyone in. I've been in my little bubble for six years and you come over right. like this. I said, I don't care if you get in an accident in your car, you go take a nap or you do what you do, but yeah. you get the fuck out of my house. And I took him over to the elevator. I took him down to his car. I said, I hope you pull over and take a nap, but you're not my responsibility. You've got your ass here this loaded. You get your ass out of here this loaded. Yeah. And I was so <laughs> proud of myself. My daughter said, God, I don't know if I could have done it. I would have had him here and been irritated. And I'm like, no, I, that's boundaries, though. I don't have the space in my yeah. condition to put up with anybody in my bubble that isn't higher vibration. Like, fuck that. You're not bringing this shit to me. But I like yeah. working with alcoholics before that. I love being in the field with AA. And, and I did yeah. Suicide Prevention Center for five years. I did... Um, the Center for Attitudinal Healing with Jerry Jampolsky for decades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I volunteered at Glide, which is in the Tenderloin for um, like 13 years. I've been sponsoring people in AA for 30. You know, oh, and, wow. Do you still do that? No, I, I can't go to meetings. I can't go out. Like, no. if I'm in a meeting, I say things that are really awful. It's too much to process. I can't even deal with the grocery store. It's just too many, too yeah. many colors, too much, too much. I, I'm, I really have to, in order to stay in my, um, I have to practice like yeah. three hours of meditations in the morning and I teach Jinan Qigong and I order, uh, organize for all these um, ancient wisdom keepers that were working at that medicineless hospital because Dr. Pang ended up opening a hospital in China and they had 200,000 case studies um, with a 98% improvement rate on what the Western medical model deems as incurable. Wow. And so all of these advanced teachings are what I teach and study. And I ended up organizing for um, teachers internationally. And yeah. that's how I pay for all of my education. Because Qigong is not cheap. It's, yeah. it's nothing compared to chemotherapy. And it really works. Yeah. But it's very, it's pricey. So I've been studying. I did a seven-year program, which was, is college accredited in four years. I've gotten my ability to read again and to study. But I can only study um Jin and Qigong just like with the course I could only do the course for like 15 yeah. years I didn't do tv or anything I just did the course so my soul you know like will give me enough to learn this stuff but I, I don't pleasure read or anything like that like yeah really doesn't process any of that so yeah, yeah. but um I also did hospice 
for a couple of years. And another thing that I do promote with any, everybody that I work with is let's practice dying. Let's meet with choice and compassion. Let's have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pull the plug? They won't let us pull the plug when you have a cognitive impairment because then they say you're not of sound mind and body in the last 90 days of your life. So you can't really commit suicide. If it, But I had a plan the whole time. Now yeah. I wouldn't do it. I'll just go to end game. But before, when I read my menu on frontal temporal dementia, you know, thinking about killing people and hurting people and the violence and stuff like that, like FTD gets really awful. I would want to have the plug pulled, you know? Yeah. I would like somebody to take me out at that point, but I won't be able to make that decision when I'm that fucked up. Wow. And that's the problem. So you can't do choice and compassion and death with dignity. But what I recommend is meeting with them, have the conversation, get empowered that you can you know, get the information because just knowing that I could when it was really awful was like my one trump card, like, okay, I can quit if this, when this gets too bad, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a soul doesn't really need to do that. But, you know, I, I my yeah. best friend said charge nurse of infectious disease, everybody that works at UCSF, they have an end game. You know, they're not going to go through the shit that we we get put through, through the medical industry. And I think it's really beautiful to just go, let's practice dying. Like Timothy Leary and um, Ram Dass were saying at the end right. of the movie Awake, like this could be a beautiful journey. And the more I practice that, the more these diseases and this stuff yeah. went away. It's that fear or not addressing it. But like, I just want to bring the most beautiful essence into my next step, my, my next step. How can I embody and empower myself with grace and dignity? So that's been like my keywords. Like if I can empower you and empower me and if I can handle this with grace and dignity and deal with like being in the war zone and still having peace of mind. Yeah. No matter what's going on out here, can I, and this is the best thing to tell your brother, like just love yourself and be gentle. Because my mantra for the first year and a half was like, are you fucking kidding me? That's what I said to myself every time I broke everything that I had. I ruined all my shit. You know, I pull my own hair out trying to get dressed. Like just, you know, just chaos. And I was so hard on myself. And then at one point I was like, you're doing a really good job. You've got such, you know, you've got dementia. Can you just be, you're doing so good considering like that shift from aggressiveness towards ourselves to like just the self-love, like, Hold your heart where you have abandoned you. Like, I'm still in here. Even though nothing's working out here, I'm still in here and I'm still love. Like, I, I need love. I need to love myself. This is a call for love. Everything's a call for love. And no one else is going to love you because you're not lovable. So you have to right. come back to love. And that's been the medicine. That's the medicine. What's your... What's your advice on bringing up, like, I think there was some trauma in the past. Of course. Is, like, is that worth dealing with? Or well, all, is that disease, better? all disease is based on stress and trauma. All yeah. disease. So it's multifactorial, like a quick fix. I could send you guys this inner smile meditation. Uh -huh. Which is the meditation that just basically I did for one of my first healing um, classes. And it was live, and the tech crew didn't show up. And the person that I was partnering with, because I could barely talk, that was supposed to be doing half the practice didn't show up. And everything went sideways. They ended up opening the practice to the public instead of just the, the, oh. the, the, um, uh, Qigong group. Yeah. And it was just crazy. All this shit happened. And it's about smiling inwardly, like coming inside and closing your eyes and letting the corners of your eyes just soften towards your ears and let the corners of your mouth just soften towards the back of your head and let the wrinkles just soften towards your head and getting your heart and your mind into your body with just this, not this manic smile, but just this inner smile looking inwardly and smiling inwardly into your brain and then smiling inwardly into behind your nose and your eyes and your mouth and smiling inwardly. So the meditation goes on. It's a, it's a practice. 
and you do this inner smile where you start to smile and all your cells can smile and then before you know it you've got a new pattern and the more you do this inner smile meditation and smile inwardly mm -hmm. the more your cells each time they code with the smile and you can redo your whole immune system in 21 days it's about creating instead of trying to fix the trauma right now it's yeah. really about creating an environment that's holistic and that can he heal that's coming from love and then your energy shifts and so this anger and this repetitive thinking about the past and the trauma gets dissipated for a little while while you rebuild a new immune system okay and the issues are all in our tissues so practicing qigong yeah. is the medicine that it's like all of a sudden, all these other traumas that I had in my life throughout all the different practices of the Qigong have manifested in my body. So getting relaxed is like the number one most important thing. And, and you know, learning like to flow through your body with water and with chi and with good energy, like these are the ways to heal it really fast. Instead of going issue after issue after issue, just practicing Qigong, the issues come up and get healed with energy. That's okay. how it worked for me. I went to therapy. I was in, um, you know, regular therapy. I went seven years with one lady twice a week. I did, you know, AA for 30 years and then coached, you know, for 15 years through the course mm -hmm. of And all of that helps. But this is kind of like undoing it in a different way with energy and letting the energy move through these tissues and letting good information and energy come in so that's how i've handled it but for for your brother and for you even or for anyone knowing that what i'm thinking everything we know this in the course is an outward picture of an inward condition right. but for english i mean for just regular people to just say you know um the mind goes where the chi flows so if you're thinking with anger you're going to call in more anger so in other words, like if you want to have an, a different outcome, you've got to change the right. pattern in your mind. So if your pattern is critical, if you want to have peace and harmony, you're the one that has to stop being critical. You know, so to say it in, in other words, because Course in Miracles turns most people off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just to say, you know, if you want break a habit it takes 21 days if you want to grow new neural pathways it takes 90 days of yeah. changing the way you think and so you can grow new neurons you might not be able to you know heal the scar tissue in your brain but you can grow a whole new neural pathway in 90 days and that's the invitation it's like you could be the master not the slave so mm -hmm. that's what I'll tell this, the regular person, including my grandbaby. I mean, everyone, it's like, if you're reactive, which dementia and Alzheimer's and alcoholics and all of us egos are like reactive. But if you want to be the master instead of the slave, then you choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No matter what, like, yeah. you're, not the, you're not the slave. You are the master. Like I could be happy in spite of all of this. So yeah. the implication is that, and then you have to have a support group around you that's consistently reminding you, I'm I'm after mastery. And I love the Invictus poem. You know, oh yeah, so do I. The master that's one of my favorite movies. Yes. Oh, yes. That line at the where I'm the captain of my ship. I am the master of my exactly. soul. And then the one of my, I hold on to that. Me too. And I recommend that. It's, it used to be on the bottom of all my emails. And then I recommend for your brother and for you, minimum 10 minutes of comedy a day. Okay. Go on YouTube and watch. Um, uh, you Remember Candid Camera? Yeah. I mean, you watch these new Candid Cameras, these like mock versions of Candid Camera, and you're peeing. I'm, I'm laughing so lo loud. I know that the neighbors are going to call the police. Like, you need to have from the belly laughs. You've got to come back to your joy. So just okay. minutes of something funny a day is the best medicine that you can find. You know, right. inner smile, holding your heart, laughing. You know, I could choose peace instead of this. That's, That's right. Miracles. You know, all of these tools are, have to come in and be like, 
you know, help me to see this differently. Help me to see this with love size, you know, and to get back, come back to your body. Get your brother, come back to your body. Come, let your head drop down into your heart. Let's go, you know, and I think sometimes just you doing it can help him to do it. Let me okay. come back to my heart. Let me come back to my heart. Show me what love would do. Okay. Yeah, what he's dealing with now is a lot of depression. Yeah, well, and he's been question. depressed for a couple years, and I think that was when it really came hard. Well, the antidepressants are half the problem. Yeah. Because I'm off of all that. The antidepressants fuck you up more than anything. Oh. Sorry, I hate to say it to the mental illness companies, but that's everyone I know that's got in the FTD that's gotten off the medication is doing better. Wow. Everyone that's been on it, they're put on more and more and more. So they're taking this and now they can't shit. Now they're taking this and now they have anxiety. And now they're taking this because they're psychotic. And now they're taking this. And before you know it, they're like la la land. Okay. You know, and that's what happened for me. The more I got on shit, the worse everything got continuously. And that's what the pharma company loves. They're making so much money on that shit. Mm -hmm. Then your organs are failing and you need to have this surgery. And before you know it, you, I mean, I, I had gastroparesis. I couldn't digest. I didn't go to poop for 19 days on all that medication. I had to get colonics every week. And you know, it's just a snowball of hell. Yeah. Wow. So. That was okay. nice to me. I don't know that everyone's willing to do it, but it's it's the more energy work I work with, the more we, I was able to get off the medication. My hair improved. Like I was, my everything was destroyed. My skin, my hair, everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just wondering because um, he's starting therapy next week. Mm -hmm. Well, you know they're going to medicate him. That's yeah, what they're doing. Yeah. No darts. They're going to say, try this one, and, if, and then that, try that one, and then we'll combine these, and we'll give you a cocktail of that. And they're going to do that. That's what they do. It doesn't make anyone not depressed. It just might, yeah. might do a placebo to numb you in the beginning. But it doesn't. The work of being antidepressed is choosing love, watching comedy, doing the inner smile, yeah to be the master not the slave that's how but you do you think therapy would be helpful i think it could be if you're working with the spirit yeah so, depression remember in the course in miracles it that's says, right when you're in spirit you're not depressed and when you're yeah. dispirited you're depressed yeah so part of depression is not doing your to-do list it's not doing feeding your soul it's not nurturing yourself it's not loving yourself it's not healing all that stuff it's 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 yeah. eating all the shit you know the processed food it's eating the the commercials the tv the materialism like they, it's never going to get us there this is a world problem that we have you know and so is your brother ready for all that i doubt it he may need yeah. the you know you got to meet him where he's at i don't know yeah. what his assignment is but you know what my assignment is yeah i know what the courts and miracles assignment is and that's right. what i'm doing with this i want to wake the fuck up this lifetime i don't yeah. want to come back here ever again i'm not, i'm not in any delusion that i think it's nice here i just consider this and right. this is the Gong. this is a transformation station and so we can right. transform this or we could throw pills on it and just die and have to come back you know, so yeah. I don't know what your brother's path is. Yeah. I uh, suspect that the pills may be the easiest way to go for him. Yeah. But the invitation to, to ask him and invite in these ideas. Right. It's, it's worth it because we teach what we need to learn, Raina, and this means right. we need to learn it. Yeah. You know, we teach what we need to learn. I'm teaching you what I need to learn. That's yeah. how we remember. So the, it's an invitation. And then it's also just, again, remembering you meet him where he's at. You, you can't treat him with what's treated me necessarily, but maybe you can. Yeah. But it's, a good, it's good to have that framework. It's both and. Yeah. You know, it's not loving for me to come at people that have not done the work to try to meet them with this stuff. That's not right. loving. But the invitation that it's possible and maybe yeah. bring, you know do you remember um Terry Jankowski starting the um center for attitudinal healing yes well do you know um judith scutch 
Yeah. Okay. So her best friend has been my coach. Her name's, um, I think it's Bev. I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah. Bev. Beverly. Uh-huh. Her husband had Alzheimer's and they navigated the Alzheimer's with awareness of the Course in Miracles. And she was started teaching me when I first got diagnosed that everything is frequency. So if I change the frequency of my thinking, then the frequency comes up. And if I can just, if you can get to your brother that way and just say, if we could just bring the frequency up, you know, yeah. because positive ions connect to positive ions. And so if your brother is, has any sort of science thing, no, he, he's we, very intelligent, very, he's a computer geek. Perfect. Because he can even yeah. understand that positive ions connect to positive ions. And it's right. a frequency game. And you might want to, um, let me, let me check Beverly's last name. You might want to get that book that she wrote on how to wake up from Alzheimer's, from their journey of, of Alzheimer's. Let me just look oh. at my email. Anyway, she I was there. thinking he doesn't like to read. Right. But, um, I have the whole Course in Miracles on CD. Right. Kenneth Wapnick. Yeah. And yeah. him doing the whole mm -hmm. Course in Miracles. So it's a big. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I have that too. That, that, maybe I'll pull that out. You know, it might be for him, you know, because if you're looking at the course through the ego's eyes, it's very threatening. Right. You know, if you're looking at it with the vision and the one eye, it's music to your soul. But if yeah. he's really far gone into dementia. No, I think he's in the beginning. Is he coming uh, with spirit? Does he look with vision? Does he know the difference between duality and oneness? No. You might want to start with Abraham Hicks. Yeah, I've got all those. I think that's an easier language to understand for him. Is I've got I've got CDs. I've she, got YouTube her. CDs. And she, yeah. you know, she's fast and she's quick and it, and she's practical. And it's not so threatening because the words in the Course in Miracles have the biblical kind of contention and all that other stuff. And, yeah. and you know, I think it, it'd be too complicated right now. Hicks would be good. Hicks is good for him. Yeah. 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 Another one that he might resonate no that probably still be too much um is the journey of the souls is a good book that really helped a lot of people journey of the souls is a really but he's not reading i would do esther hick i would do a quick youtube like if he's got aggravation with his friends then google esther hicks losing a pet or whatever it is that the issue is at that time and she gives yeah. you like tuned in tapped in turned on a, a five minute like whew, Upgrade. She have um YouTube. She has all YouTube. You can YouTube oh. everything on her. Like when oh, God. if you're trying to my daughter's trying to get a job or trying to uh, we'll just Google something and then we get on the same page with that. That's a really oh, quick okay. Tip. I think he'd much do much better. So the the woman who coached me in the beginning, Judith Scutch's friend is Beverly Hamilton. Is Bev what? Beverly Hamilton. And she, she studied the whole course and did the whole Alzheimer's journey with her husband, Hap. I think his name was Hap. Okay. I can't remember his name. But anyway, so she's, she, if you get that book, it could probably help you navigate through it too. But if okay. I was you, I would also really go to Tipa Snow. Go on YouTube and just go, and, and, and learn from Tipa Snow because... Yeah, Tipa, what was that name? Tipa? Tipa. T-E-E-P-A. Tipa Snow. Snow. Yeah. Okay, I'll look her up. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. This is a really powerful conversation, and I do a lot of coaching. Would it be okay to share this with other people so I can minimize having to do this talk again? Oh, sure. I figured you would be great, be allowing that. I'm very grateful. Thank you. I'm very grateful for your time. Oh, I'm so... And for honored. your spirit and for your sharing. Oh, uh, you know... I'm not it's deep us, right? <laughs> And of course, I got you a ticket to Moji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went up on stage and talked to him, too. Oh, you did that for me. I'm sure I was in your back pocket for that. That was yeah. great. That was right when I was getting diagnosed. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think. I think that was around 2012. 10 or 
10 or 11 or oh, was it 2000 yeah no that, maybe 12. i think it was closer because i know that i was when i bought the tickets i was in, i was capable and all of a sudden i wasn't i was losing my capacity the more iron transfusions yeah i think it was about 12. that's when i got diagnosed yeah yep yep that's why i couldn't go yeah yeah, yeah. interesting so beautiful i love that yeah. Well, I'm here for you guys. If there's anything oh, else that I can do you. to inspire or support you, you know, I've been on all sides of the coin working with hospice and working with people in suicide prevention center and all of that too. So yeah, I'm sure he, he will contact you as well. I invited him too. He reached out okay. to me yesterday on Facebook. I don't know if he told you. Oh yeah. He said he, you you answered him or something yeah i was proud of him for reaching out too i usually yeah. keep everything confidential though so whatever you tell me is confidential and whatever he tells me is confidential yeah. too, unless you guys have permission to um yeah well we're pretty we're pretty close i have power of attorney and all that for him now and thank god that it's all in place yeah yeah, yeah. So the financial ruin. You know, if he has FTD, yeah, very very common for us to um, destroy the financial in in every way and to steal and I mean just yeah awful behaviors. I mean awful. Yeah. I mean, I first was, you know, I didn't. I I had been in recovery for so long, and I was some lady made me mad at the salon, and I opened up her conditioner and I just took this huge handful out of it and I was like. I just wanted to steal from her and I didn't, I mean, I wasn't that way, yeah. you know? And that was some of the first symptoms. Like I, I wanted to take her shit. Like I, and I wanted to hurt her. Like I wanted to take it off. It was crazy. And it felt really right to me. Like I thought that was the right thing to do. And it was shocking yeah. at the same time. And I, I didn't know I had FTD at that time. And I was just like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even really understand, but then I didn't want to tell anyone. And I was, embarrassed and ashamed and you know so you go away because you do stuff and you can't even acknowledge yourself that you've done it because it's so out of your own character right. and it's never been a pattern before and it's i mean even if i did still when i was young but i it just you know it just such such a different way of do unto others as you do unto yourself and to give is to receive like all this stuff that I had been living for so long. It was just shocking the stuff that I had actually done. So he, it's, it's hard to love yourself when you have this disease. Yeah. It's, it's a very like 60 minutes just said it is. Um, I can't remember the words they said, but it's not the most difficult, but it's the most, um, I can't remember the word, not harmful, but cruel. It's the most cruel disease known to man. And that's what my doctor said to me. The first thing he said is, um, uh, this is the most vicious disease. The most vicious, oh. the most, and in my words are, this is the most heinous, yeah. heinous disease. It, 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 it hurts everyone involved. Well, that 60 Minutes piece, he found that somewhere and he sent it to me. And that's what started us thinking this way. And then, um, and then I remembered you. Yeah. And I looked up your profile and said the BVFTD. I Googled that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I contacted 60 Minutes yesterday and I said, you missed 90% of it. And everyone yeah. in the support groups is pissed, including me, but I want you to know I'm healing it. Yeah. And we'll see if they get back to me. But I just yeah. decided, you know what, you're only putting in like, you're, they missed the whole part about losing your mind. Like right. not knowing how to add, not knowing how to spell, not knowing how to um, use your hands. I couldn't open the computer. I couldn't remember how to get my phone open. I couldn't yeah. remember how to wipe myself. Like they missed all of it. Like I couldn't remember. I would take the coffee pot and I put it in the garbage disposal. Like my brain didn't know how to get it onto the element. You know, right. I mean, they, they missed like 99% of what's going on with it. Not to mention the physical problems. 
Yeah. You know, the sandbags in the legs and, and, and the breathing problems and the choking problems. Like they missed, they could have had such a better drama story. They could yeah. have sold so much. Like they focused on one little piece. Yeah. One little piece. They have no idea. And they're going to hear from me. Yeah. They're going to hear from me and a bunch of oh, other people. I hope other people have had the audacity to call them. Most people with FTD, we can't figure out how to get to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get from one room to the other. You don't even remember that you wanted to go when you wet yourself. You know, that's how bad that gets. That yeah. really bad. Like bowel problems, urinary tract infections, all that stuff, because you forget that you have to go. You forget you just ate and you eat again. Like you eat like an animal, you gulp down hot water, you choke down food. It's most people gain 160 pounds. Like it is awful if he has FTD, just okay. awful. So buckle up. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry to make it so bleak, but that's the reality. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do. I feel honored that your willingness to share with me. I'm willing to share with everybody. I want to expose it and I want to heal it yeah. as much as I can. And I want some grace if I end up going down that road again, because I'm supposed to. And yeah. right now I've got a reprieve, but I work eight to 10 hours a day at that reprieve. And right. the have to be right. Like when I'm stressed, everything comes back. So I, you know, I create this environment of for healing, but at the same time, I can see that that may be my end game and I have to be okay with that too, yeah. you know? And so hopefully I'll have enough people aware that they can love me instead of hate me. They can remember to love me, yeah. the, but that's real hard to discern when I'm awful with you. Yeah. My family moved away when I was diagnosed. My boyfriend left. I mean, everyone left and I don't blame them. Even with all my tools, I was awful. Yeah. awful. Inhuman. Awful. I hate it. Wow. I hate it with a hatred that's not human, including myself and everything. Wow. And I'm bored. I'm not in apathy. I cry now. I feel, but I still have some apathy and I still have hatred triggers and I still have aggressive, you know, and with FTD, all of a sudden this vicious, vicious person reacts before you even know you're upset. Like the reactivity is ahead of you. It's the weirdest thing. You react and you didn't even know in your brain that something was upsetting you. It was triggering you, yeah. Oh my God, it's just so fast. It's before the incident. It's like, you know in heart math, when they say your heart knows when something's coming? It's almost like that heart mm -hmm. math where you know something's hit and you hit before you even got hit. It's really yeah. strange. It doesn't make sense, but it's it's like, the reverse of love, it's, yeah. the reverse, it's the reverse of hate. The hatred's activated before the ha hatred energy comes in. It's really yeah. remarkable, actually. All right. Yeah, so bless all of us. I mean, this is yeah. just the ego in bold print. I know. You know? So it's a great opportunity for us in The Course in Miracles. Like, the, uh, the, my mantra is there's nothing I can't bring love to. There's That's right. Love to. There's nothing I can't bring love to because this is trying to love myself when I've done all that shit. Yeah. And it, when I do that, then people start to love me a little bit too. All right. Brutal. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rena. It's so good to see you. I love you. I don't know oh, you, but I know you like the you. back of my hand. I'm so grateful for Teddy to put us together. And yeah, I've never met Vicky, but I feel like I know her too. Oh, I love Vicky too. Well, will you tell her that I extend my love and okay? I miss the Course in Miracles community, but I get to tap in a little bit. I just helped um, Warren die. He was the the founder of the oh. Center Peace. And I got to be involved and go show up at the hospital and I didn't do anything inappropriate. It was wow. I joined with group where I didn't do anything inappropriate. So there is recovery. Yeah. 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 All oh, my, all my death experience, I was able to love him and shower him with she and put on his favorite music and hold his hand and tell his daughter, take a picture with everyone holding his hand before he dies. Like all the training that I've had from all my death, my family dying so young. And I wish I did it this way. And I wish I did it that way. 
it was the most beautiful death I've ever experienced. And this was last Sunday on Easter. He died on Passover. Oh. Yeah. He had just left here and he went, he was going to study the Course in Miracles and he had a fall after an appointment. He had a brain bleed and he died, oh. you know, a day or two later on Easter. And it was, it was the death that I wish everyone could have. Every, we were singing to him and playing his music and just showering him with love and he yeah. went peacefully. So that's possible. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, lovey. Thank you. All right. You but take care. You want a copy of this or do you feel yes, like... Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to send you my email. Perfect. Thank you. And you can play it to anyone. I'm, I'm fully transparent. I have no secrets. I just want to help. Okay. You. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. I love it. Thank you for letting <laughs> me be a part of your journey and your path. I'm going to light a candle for both you and your brother. I'm here for you oh. when it hits the fan. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And if he wants to do a little bit of Qigong practice, I've been at it for a long, long time. I could give him a couple of little practices that could help. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Even just opening and closing with the hands, just bringing in new energy. Okay. Very powerful. I'll send you guys the inner smile meditation too. I think if you oh. listen to that and you listen okay. to that, that'll be a really good foundation. All right. Okay. So I'll look forward to getting your email. I'm going to write that down right now. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, Take care. Thank you.